Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here with me this week. We are officially halfway through January. I cannot believe it. Um, this month, we've actually been talking about self-control and we still have a lot to learn. Uh, this week is how we need to not be controlled by our anger. We're gonna hear a very important and pivotal point in David's life um, when he is able to confront Saul while he's sleeping. Um, and if you know about this, well, you know what? Let's watch the Bible story and I'll talk to you after. See you in a minute. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow you. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. Help me believe you know what's best for me. Feel it in my soul When you are in control I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah Lost and I don't know where to turn. God, you're always there for me. Wherever I go, you're always by my side. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. So help me believe you know what's best for me. Jacob, here today to talk to you about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. It's very important to have control. I have a controller for just about everything, in fact. Like this stereo. Thanks, stereo. Or this fan. I've even got a remote for my blender. 
And of course, everyone's favorite remote control, the TV remote. Whoa, where is the TV remote? That's, this is its spot. This is its home, it's where it lives. Where are you little TV remote? TV remote! TV, 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 TV. No, little guy, where are you? TV! This makes me so mad. <laughs> I just, I, uh, I bought the remote caddy so that I could house my remotes. And when someone takes the remotes away and doesn't put it back, I get real angry. I ask you, why have a remote caddy if you're not gonna caddy? The remotes! Ah! What's going on? Oh, I think I'm in forest. Okay, maybe this is for the best. I was really losing my temper there. Okay, I feel better. You can unpause me now. That was a close one. Anger can really take over if you let it. In today's story, we'll hear about a guy named David who had every reason to be angry. Let's hope it doesn't control him. Oh, I wonder what this controls. I don't even own a car. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24. David had been chosen by God as Israel's next king, but for a while, Saul was still king. David served King Saul and won many battles for him. The people loved David. Hey, David, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow up my hey, David! Hey, 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 David! Hey, David! Saul, however, was deeply jealous of David. In fact, he even tried to kill him. David escaped into the wilderness, where around 400 men came to join him. People who were in trouble are old money. A merry band of misfits. But Saul still saw David as a threat. When he heard that David and his men were camped in the desert of Maon, Saul took soldiers to chase after him. They're right behind us, David. Quick, we'll head around the mountain. Just as Saul and his men were closing in on David, Saul received word that the Philistines were attacking Israel. Oh, phooey. Saul was forced to stop the chase and deal with the Philistines. David and his men could breathe a sigh of relief. There's a safe place near En Gedi. Maybe Saul will finally leave us alone if we hide out there. But as soon as Saul had dealt with the Philistines, a messenger brought news. David is in the desert of En Gedi. Aha! We've got him this time. Gather 3,000 of the best soldiers from all of Israel. But, Your Majesty, David only has 400 men. 3,000, and not one less. Saul set out once more, determined to wipe out his rival. I bet that pipsqueak is hiding out near the rocky cliffs of the wild goats. Well, that seems... Oddly specific. Yeah, he used to herd sheep. In fact, David and his men have been staying near some sheep pens not far from the cliffs. So, headed this way, he's got 3,000 soldiers. Again? Why can't he leave us alone? We can take him on. I'm worth 10 of his soldiers. David could feel his anger boiling, but he took a deep breath. We won't fight them now. And uh, we won't have a choice in about six minutes. The caves! I, I want everyone inside! Stat! David and his men heard into a nearby cave that cut deep inside the cliffs. All the way to the back! They're here! 
Outside near the sheep pens, Saul had called a halt. Take a break, men. At that moment, Saul found himself in need of a royal outhouse. Well, I require a, a royal outhouse. <clears throat> I believe there's a cave over there, your majesty. Uh, I suppose it'll do. Saul entered the cave. Far back in the cave, David and his men froze. Through the gloom, David could see the man who had tried to kill him and was now forcing him to live on the run. What if he finds us? I don't believe we're Saul's number one priority at the moment. He's alone. This is your chance. God's handed your enemy over. Don't let this chance just trickle away. David's anger burned red hot as he crept up behind Saul, sword at the ready. But then, he forced himself to stop. Instead of attacking Saul, David sliced off a corner off the king's long royal robe. Saul left the cave with no idea that David was still inside. Time to move out, men. This is the day we take out that Whipper snapper David. But at that moment, David emerged from the cave and cried out, The King Saul! David? David bowed low to the ground. Why do you listen when men say David is trying to harm you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. Some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't. I said, he is the Lord's anointed king. Saul could only stare in shock as David held the piece of fabric he cut from Saul's robe. Look at this! I cut off the corner of your robe, but I did not kill you! Yet you are hunting me down to kill me! May the Lord show that I'm not guilty of doing anything wrong. May he save me from you. The truth cut Saul to the heart and began to weep. Oh, you are a better person than I am. You have treated me well, but I've treated you badly. May the Lord reward you. I know for sure that you will be king. Now, promise me that you won't kill my family or, or wipe out my name from my family line. David looked his enemy straight in the eye. I promise. Then Saul and his men returned home, and David and his band of misfits return to their usual hiding place. David was angry at King Saul, and he probably should have been. King Saul was trying to kill David. But even in his anger, David didn't lose control. He paused and thought and didn't let his anger take over. You don't need a remote control for yourself to know how to pause. You can do that on your own. If you're angry because someone borrowed something they weren't supposed to, or someone said something that really hurt your feelings, you could just fly off the handle. <laughs> or you can pause, count to three, or 10, or 100 if you have to, and think about how you're going to respond. Remember, you can pause in real life, but what you can't do is rewind. Once you've said or done something in anger, it's out there. You can never take it back. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever get angry. In fact, Jesus himself got angry, but he had good reasons to get angry. And so do we sometimes. It's like when you or someone you know is being treated unfairly, that's a good reason to get angry. Losing a remote, probably not the best reason to get angry, but good anger or bad, it's still wise to keep control of your anger instead of letting it control you. That's the one thing to remember today. Don't be controlled by your anger. Count to 10 and keep your cool. Music. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> 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 
I gotta get a universal remote. I'll see you next time. Our verse this month comes from the book of 1 Peter. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 1 Peter 1.13 God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 1 Peter 1.13 And the signs this month are two that you already know. God and life. Again, they are God and life. Okay, now that we're all on the same page and you guys have watched your Bible story, you can see that King Saul had been chasing David for a very long time. And I'm sure that upset David a lot. In fact, made him angry. And David had a chance to, with his anger, take out King Saul. But he chose not to because he used God and the fruit of the spirit of self-control and to walk away. And what we get to learn is that anger is kind of going to happen when we're in difficult situations. But if we can control our anger and really focus it, we will not hurt others. We will not hurt ourselves. So let's go ahead and pray to God now and just thank him for this gift of self-control that will help us be steadfast and follow him. Dear God, it's amazing how David treated King Saul that day. David spared Saul's life even though he had every right to be angry. Please show us how we can have the same kind of self-control that David did. Show us how we can stay calm and make the wise choice instead of giving in to our anger. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. I'll see you for our last half of January next week. <laughs>